I was just doing enough to get by. Work was easy enough that I could succeed at work, but I would struggle throughout the day. I felt horrible. When Adam joined us, one of the things that he shared, which I think most of us can relate to, is that he moved his quit drinking date for quite a few years. And I think he is willing to share with us how many times, maybe <laughs> a little bit more about yeah. that. Yeah, it was probably about 10 years ago, I put a um, put a meeting on my calendar and it, it said something to the effect of uh, life is a journey. Um, it's a marathon, not a sprint. And I put that on my calendar and that was the day that I was going to quit drinking. And it was about a week out from that date that I made it. And I got to that date and I was, you know, fully thought that I, it would happen. And, uh, you know, about a week later, I was drinking every night again and I moved it to the next week and then I moved it again. <clears throat> and over the course of 10 years, I probably moved it every couple of weeks to a month out another week. And I went through that process for 10 years until I started the program. Wow. Yeah. Um, and that was obviously, you know, for you, a very conscious thing. It, every time you would change the date. Did you during that time take any time off? Did you try and stop or were you just um, continuing to drink? Yeah, I was continuing to drink. I would take maybe a week off um, at times. And that week I was pretty committed at the time and thought I could continue it. For longer than a week but it would never last more than more than really a week and then i would feel great at you know the four or five day mark and i would think wow i'm i'm feeling great and then all of a sudden i found myself the next day with a with the drink in my hand and the cycle would just start over yeah i think it's um so relatable to so many people that word cycle uh, vicious cycle even we might call it so can you recall, Adam, what were your motivations for drinking? Like, were you somebody that drank to relieve stress or were you somebody that was social with alcohol? How did it appear in your life? Yeah, it definitely wasn't the social aspect. It was, I, I really drank for the most part home alone mm -hmm. um, and I was trying to escape. And it was so escape, you know, whether it was life or things that I, thought were challenges, um, but it's really that escapism, getting away from things and trying to turn my brain off. Yeah, it does that, doesn't it? It does. It has a <laughs> sneaky way of doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So you're drinking home alone, you're using it to shut that off your busy mind, and in those moments it's effective. What were the impl implications of that or the impact of that on your life? Yeah, you know, I was just kind of going through the motions every day because I would be, you know, hungover and tired. And, um, you know, I was just doing enough to get by. And, you know, work was easy enough that I could succeed at work. Um, but I would struggle throughout the day. I felt horrible. Um, I really wasn't sleeping. And there were nights when I was getting, you know, staying up really late drinking and then um, only getting four hours of sleep and then just battling through the work day. And then when I was done, you know, working, I would get home and I just had no motivation or, or energy to do anything. And, um, and so that, that really just persisted and it, it kind of became the norm. And I was just doing that and living, um, just getting by. And I was come, kind of also, you know, pretty separated from what was going on. I just kind of, going through the motions of life and not really being connected with what was going on. Yeah. Yeah. And so there's work that, you know, the work was kind of, um, you're just getting by. There's the, um, health side, the lack of sleep. What about relationships at the time? What was going on there? Yeah, it was, uh, it was a struggle with my girlfriend because, you know, I was able to kind of maintain it because we were living apart. And so there was a certain period where I was, you know, we would talk every night, um, but I would usually pour my first or second drink right about the time we started talking so that she couldn't really recognize that I was drinking. 
And then um, I would, you know, continue that drinking in the evening. And, and she knew that I was drinking, didn't know how much. Um, and then it started to where I was drinking and she could pick up on it. And she could tell even after my first drink. Um, and that was really a strain on, on that relationship. Um, and then also with my son, you know, I would always tell myself I, you know, wouldn't drink at times to be able to do things with my son, but I was never really connected because I was tired. And, um, you know, I had spent the day going through the motions of life and then I wasn't engaging enough with him, even though I told myself that I was, I was doing it. I really wasn't. I was just happened that in those moments I might not have been drinking, but I was either getting over drinking, feeling horrible or thinking about drinking. Yeah. I totally relate. Um, and just for the listeners, Adam has a son who's 12, um, Quinn. Great. And um, I'm excited to learn a bit later on about how that relationship's changed. But before we get to that, I'm interested to, if you can recall how you felt about yourself at that time when you were stuck in that vicious cycle of drinking. You know, it's kind of funny because I I sort of felt like it was just a part of my identity because I think one of the things I felt like I was sort of broken and that I was um, almost, I used the phrase damaged goods. And so I was drinking home alone by myself when I wasn't with other people. And so it was me, you know, drinking because I was damaged and then thinking that was just part of my identity and that I would never solve that. And that that was just going to be a part of who I was. Yeah, that's such a powerful belief to have, right? I almost wore it like a badge of honor. Like I could get through life and be successful and have this thing that I was drinking that made me almost in some weird way stronger. Mm -hmm. um, that I was, you know, able to handle all of these things not well, but still get by. And I almost thought that I, it was like, um, that it, it wasn't causing as much effect in my life than it really was. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, um, the case for so many people. We downplay it, um, make it not that big a deal. However, eventually something happens or a series of events happen that wake us up, um, and so from going from a place where you felt broken, that you were damaged goods, and that in some ways that was, or in many ways that was your identity, and you wore it as a badge of honor, what happened, if anything, that clicked you to set that date and actually go for it? Yeah, I, I always knew in the back of my mind that I was kidding myself mm -hmm. and that I was getting by and able to manage, but I knew that it was a it was a problem and and that I shouldn't, you know, I had saved that meeting invitation to myself about quitting and telling myself I was going to quit and then found myself believing that it was, you know, part of my identity. And then, you know, over time, I had always knew that I had to quit. And I think I just strung together a long period of where it just got to a point where it was always bad, but it got really bad to where I was drinking until two, three in the morning and then going to work at five, six o'clock in the morning. And I just realized that it was like, I woke up one day and I was just like, it's, I've got to figure this out. And, and it was actually interesting. Um, my girlfriend told me that, um, you know, one of the things was that you shouldn't feel bad that you need, you need to talk to somebody about this. And she was really supportive. She, she knew what was going on. And, and she said, you know, you, you definitely need to talk to somebody. And, and then I saw a video that James had um, and it talked about that need for community. And, and when she had told me some things, I kind of discounted it and said, I'm too strong. I'm, I'm strong. I'm getting away with this. Now I can figure this out on my own. And I saw something on Instagram where James said, the one thing that people are really missing is community. And that kind of jumped out at me. And, and I'd heard Dana say that to me, but I never really took it to heart. And that's when um, there was just a, a moment on a, I think it was a Sunday 
Sunday that I just decided to, to it was time and, and made the decision to, to try to sign up for the group.